we're going to be talking about side planks for scoliosis in particular a c-shaped scoliosis so this is what it looks like from the front we have the apex on the left and the concavity on the right so what we need to do is think about these muscles these muscles on this side are lengthened because they're on the long side of the curve the muscles on this side are shortened because they're on the short side of the curve so if we think about how gravity is going to help strengthen these muscles if these muscles get shorter we would put a person lying on their side so gravity is now pushing down like this these muscles on this side are going to have to work really hard to keep the spine upwards. That's going to be the correction right there. We need the spine to go this way, gravity is putting it this way, and the plank is the instrument or the tool or the exercise to do this. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to do that in the easy method. Then I'm going to show you what we call the normal method. Then I'm going to show you how to use the pelvis to move in three planes of motion to get these muscles fired up and switched on. And then I'm going to show you how the arm can do this to get the muscles fired up and switched on. And lastly, we're going to have some bonus movements on there as well. For those of you who think this is easy, you can take it really quite far. All right, first thing we're going to do is get into a side plank position. It's important to stack the elbow underneath the shoulder. We don't want to hurt your shoulder in this position. Easy way, you're going to bend your knees 90 degrees, push your hips forward so that you're completely flat at the front. You're going to lift your hips up. This hand can go up here to help with shoulder alignment or go onto your hip to help with pelvis alignment. That's up to you. I want you to be able to breathe and do this for 35 to 45 seconds. Once you can do that easily, then I want you to try and go straight legged. So here, imagine I have a wall behind me and I'm completely straight against that wall. We're holding this position for 45 seconds to a minute. Once you can do that, then you can uh, progress to the next level. So the next level is to take the pelvis and start moving that in the frontal plane, which is up and down like this. These muscles are contracting really hard in order to get my pelvis to move. Now, if this is the middle, we can call it neutral, I'm going down into the curve, lengthening and switching on those muscles, and then I go up above neutral. So it's down, up, above neutral. We're looking for reps of about five of these. Once you've done that, you can move the pelvis in the sagittal plane. That's just going forwards and backwards. So you're holding that contraction whilst moving your pelvis forwards and backwards. And now that is tougher than it looks. And lastly, you can move the pelvis in the transverse plane. So we're in this position here, and we're just going to drop the pelvis forwards and backwards, like a steering wheel, just rotating it forwards and backwards like this. Again, about five repetitions of that. Once you've done the pelvis, you can now bring the arm and the hand drivers into it. So you're pushing up into the side plank, taking this arm forwards, and we're going to be going, what are we doing first? Frontal plane. We're going to move this hand in the frontal plane so it goes up and down like this. Now you can see my pelvis and arm are moving together. So without really thinking about my pelvis, I'm actually making it move by using my hand as the driver. Next thing we can do is move the hand in the sagittal plane, and that's forwards and backwards like this. So if I go forwards and backwards, you'll notice my pelvis is also moving forwards and backwards. And then that's happening almost subconsciously because the shoulder girdle and the pelvic girdle work together. Lastly, we have rotation with the shoulder girdle, using the hand to go underneath the body and up behind. So I take it from here, I go underneath, and then I come back and up, and I open up like this. Again, looking for about five repetitions if you're doing this at home. It's great. All right, I mentioned the bonus. We're going to get a bonus. So we can do this using the legs and the hands at the same time, or just the legs. But I like doing them both together because it's really challenging. So those movements with a leg driver are like this. Sagittal plane, forwards and backwards. Frontal plane, up and down. Transverse plane, rotate, rotate. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring the leg movements and the arm movements together. Let's start with the sagittal plane. So forwards and backwards, forwards and backwards. Let's move on to the transverse plane. So I'm going to take my foot down and then my leg up. Foot down, leg up. Now you notice I go forwards and backwards with this uh, foot behind the, the foot that's on the ground. Just do whatever you want. 
with that one. You can take it down directly onto it, forward or backwards. Lastly, we're gonna do the transverse plane. So my feet and arms are gonna go in opposite directions. So I'm gonna start here with my hands and I'm gonna start back there with my foot. So I'm opening up and I'm coming back down. Opening up, coming back down. Again, five repetitions if possible. And this is tough. All right, just to summarize, we're gonna use a scoliosis, sorry, we're gonna use the side planks to correct a C-shaped scoliosis. Lots of different ways to do that. But this should form part of a whole body approach to scoliosis. This is not it, this is not the whole thing. This is just one exercise out of a plethora of exercises that you should be doing if you have an, an adult scoliosis or a adolescent idiopathic scoliosis.